I am aware that there are great benefits of fasting one day per week on emotional, physical, and spiritual levels. Yet, when the day I have designated to fast comes around, my mind is all too easily able to convince myself that it doesn't matter if I don't fast, as there's always next week. And I find myself wanting to eat even when I'm not hungry, if I'm on the day of my fast. And I just want to eat, 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 eat. How can I regain the inspiration and discipline I need to fast one day per week? Now, this is interesting. I want to spill the beans a little bit. In this particular case, I do know the individual um, who's asking this. And I find it fascinating that you're asking this question because you have an iron will. You have a fierce, fierce determination. And you're, you're a very opinionated and strong-willed individual. So... Um, this is really not a, an issue of willpower because your will is one of the strongest ones I've ever encountered. So there's something else going on here. Um, again, as I was addressing the individual earlier, our first question tonight, our first topic about the laziness, the sloth, the disorganization, I said the, what's underneath all of that was a lack of honesty. And there's something here too. Um, you really just don't want to fast. Um, because fasting, first of all, to fast one day is nothing. I mean, that's, you know, like tossing a penny in a fountain. Um, you know, a human being can live almost three weeks without food, the average human being, in an emergency situation, and up to a week without water. So to go 24 hours, I mean, you go, the average human being goes eight hours while they sleep without food, so you're only doing that three times. And throughout a given day, People will often go, if you're not even fasting, you'll go four or five hours between meals. So if you look at eight hours of sleep and four or five hours twice between meals, you're at eight, 13, eight, you're at 21. So there are only two or three hours you're eating in the course of a day. So if you do it, the math backwards, <laughs> you have 21 hours every day of your life where you're not eating. So just knock out three more. What's the big deal? Think about that. So you're pretty much fasting for 21 out of 24 hours anyway. So if you just, you're really only adding three more hours of fasting. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> so first, in your particular case, um, you need to look at why you don't want to fast. And the bottom line, if you don't want to, then don't. You know, no one's got a gun to your head. It is a very powerful tool. It's a very, very powerful cleansing tool. And it also helps not only on the, on, for the physical body, but it's a great um, tool uh, for your spirituality to develop spiritual discipline. When you fast, the portals open really, really more powerfully and quickly and wider to connect with the divine. I can't even begin to tell you how much. It's so powerful. Um, and also, um, a reminder about fasting, there are certain toxins in the human body which cannot be removed by any other means than fasting. So it does, it does um, cleanse in ways that nothing else in the world can cleanse. And also, it's a very, very powerful tool for balance. Um, I hesitate to use the word suppression, but let's say um, um, constructive balance and integrating of appetite. So for appetite control and appetite improvement, um, it's, it's amazing. It also te it enhances your ability to taste. Your sense of taste gets enhanced. And your, your uh, appreciation of food, not only the taste of it and the preparation of it, but even the existence of it and, and the gratefulness for having food when you go without having it. And again, one day is really, it's really nothing, nothing at all. Now, <clears throat> to, your, to your credit, I will also tell you as one who has done a great deal of fasting, um, on, on average, over the last maybe 10, 15 years, um, I personally do about three, or have done about three, seven to 10 day fasts a year. And last year I did my first 40 day fast. And um, uh, my primary fast is usually seven to 10 days when I fast. And I'll do, occasionally do a day or two here or there. But, um, a dynamic that I see not only in my body, but in many people's bodies who speak of their fasting. The moment you say, 
I am now fasting, a, a reaction happens in your brain, in your ego mind, that, that for many people, they begin an instant form of insanity. And your mind, you'll, you'll actually become ravenously hungry and you'll start wanting to eat the arms off your friends sitting in the chair next to you. You'll eat tires, you'll eat plants, you'll eat the, the, the footstool to the bar, you know, the bar stool. And you just, you go out of your mind with hunger. And of course, there is no hunger there. Your hunger didn't increase in the three seconds it said it took to say I'm fasting. It's an emotional and mental reaction. This panic that I'm, I won't have food and I'm going to die, and I'll be starving. And so it makes you reach out and hoard and, and covet and, and try to claim things. Understanding, the simple understanding that that's all that's happening is enough to transcend the circumstance. Remember, um, gaining awareness is the access to power. Applying awareness is the attainment of power. So I've given you the awareness now of what's going on in the mental and emotional body and why. Now you simply apply it by saying, oh, I get it now, so now I don't need to choose that. So when that instant reaction happens on day one, it's not hunger. It's mental and emotional reaction to the thought, the fear that you won't have food, which of course you're going to have shortly. Um, point two, that will pass as you get into day two, usually when you get into the second day for people doing extended fasting. Um, that usually passes. And then you start building this high that builds. And I found in people whose fasts I've moderated and guided that around day six, a different type of uh, process starts happening where you start really, really achingly desiring food again. And you think that, you know, it's, it's so, it's desperation that you're going to die if you don't have it and I have to eat. And, and then your mind starts telling you, you fasted enough and that's fine and it's all perfect and good. And you start justifying and most people will come off their fasts, you know, if they're doing a longer fast around day six. But day three, four, and five, you usually will have this huge high and you don't even, even the thought of food is just, it just becomes easier and easier. And so much light is coming into your body your meditations are powerful, you're having experiences, lightness, and levity, clarity, buzzing energy in, you, in yourself. And then around day six, you start having that end of five and all through day six, it can be really, really difficult. If you stay with it and get through it and get through, it's really six into seven, then on the tail end of seven into eight, you start getting this amazing high that's higher than anything you did on three, four, and five. And you start having these thoughts like, I'm never going to eat again. The thought of food, food is actually repulsive and you're just feeling like you're just living on pure prana, on pure light, which you pretty much are. And that usually goes right up into almost day 10. And then, um, and then a lot of people will come off that. But again, if you get through that one, it just goes again. And I tell you, when I was doing my 40-day my, uh, fast, um, I do some cleansing tonics and superfoods in the beginning to clean up my system. Herbs and different superfoods, all liquids, of course. Um, and by the way, smoothies don't count as liquids. Smoothies are food. <laughs> I know people make these big shakes and they'll take, you know, lamb and cabbages and broccoli and all, every food they can find. Protein bars, chocolates, and they'll put in, oh, I'm, I'm just on liquids. I just made a smoothie. <laughs> They eat more food pulverized than had they not been fasting. So, no, making smoothies out of all the food you can find in all your neighbor's food is not fasting, just for the record. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, when I start my fast, I'll sometimes, you know, integrate a lot of uh, greens, um, juiced um, vegetables, and maybe um, and take a lot of spirulina and wheatgrass, things to really clean out the body, drink detox teas, herbal teas, with nothing in them, no sweetener, no anything. And then, um, and then wean, wean, wean. But the point I'm getting, we're running out, running out of time here. Um, for most of that, after I did that first week of those clean out liquids, I was living on just coconut water, not coconut milk and not the flesh. And I was drinking four coconuts a day for at least 20 to 25 of those days and never had hunger. It was just amazing. It got higher and higher and higher. So, um, understand that a lot of it is the mind. It's mind over matter. Um, if you don't mind, it don't matter. So <laughs> anyway, but also honor your body and honor yourself. Don't try to compare yourself with me or with anyone else. 
There are people who fast more and bigger than I do, and it doesn't matter. Be true to your body and be okay with it. If you don't want to fast, don't fast. And if you want to, still honor your body. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to outdo anyone. And it's wise if you're doing longer fast, have someone guiding you and helping you. If not your guru, then a nutritionist, then a kinesiologist, a, um, a um, naturopath. So that don't try this at home, folks, is really important. So happy fasting, happy nourishment, and I love you, bless you. Thank you for letting me be with you and serve you. Namaste.